Every device should be known for something. Hopefully that something is a good thing and not something that makes it fall flat on its face. In the world of smartwatches, many have attempted to offer a full feature set with a long lasting battery, but in my decades of experience, I've never seen one succeed. That is, until the OnePlus Watch 2. But what about the rest of the package? Nothing says battery anxiety quite like a smartwatch that needs a charge before the day is over. When you're looking down at the smartwatch at 7 p.m. to see it powered off, I mean, nobody needs to live like that. So when OnePlus announced their latest wearable, the OnePlus Watch 2, with a unique hybrid OS architecture that enables all the functionality you expect out of a smartwatch, along with days upon days of promised battery life, my ears actually perked up, but I couldn't help but be a little skeptical. Had OnePlus of all companies figured out what behemoths like Samsung and Google could not? It turns out they did. And I'm kind of spoiled as a result. So let's take a closer look at the OnePlus Watch 2 and see if the rest of the package delivers quite as effectively. Now, starting with the design, I'd say it grew on me over time. At first, coming from the Pixel Watch 2, this watch felt gargantuan. And with a standard wrist size of 47 millimeters, it's gonna work for some people, but it's not really meant for smaller wrists, not by a long shot. Has stainless steel body that actually is really eye-catching. It's nice, it's elegant, it's reflective on the top. And if you look closely on the sides, you can actually see a more brushed approach, which is a nice contrast. Overall though, I'd say it's <laughs> pretty shiny. The flat glass display isn't quite as flat as it may seem upon first glance. There's a slight bit of a curve if you look really close, but not as exaggerated as what I'm used to with my Pixel Watch 2. This makes the watch seem, at least to my eyes, maybe a bit less elegant by comparison, maybe a little more masculine, but the glass itself uh, is pretty nice. And actually it's pretty durable. It's a sapphire crystal. Now I had a few of those unintended wrist to wall experiences that is bound to happen when you're wearing a smartwatch. I saw zero scratches on this one. Now, speaking of the display, this AMOLED is sharp and bright. Actually being outside in bright daylight was never an issue seeing what's on the watch face. It also happens to be a very large display. You know, it's a very large watch. I did notice the default text size was a little smaller than my preference. Thankfully, OnePlus included a font size adjustment in settings. However, be warned that this adds extra battery taxation. This change actually taps into the Qualcomm chip of the dual chip architecture, which I'll talk about in a moment. And I don't know that it makes a huge amount of difference, but they do call it out in the OS when you change the font size. So there's that. Now on the side, you see here two buttons, one on top, the home button, and one on bottom, the multifunction button. And yes, the home crown rotates and strangely does nothing when you rotate it. It's a very perplexing choice if I'm honest. OnePlus actually told 9to5Google that it truly has no function when it rotates. It's meant to survive a drop better than a static button would. Okay. But they even etched the crown, which gives it an easier spinning ability. It wants to look like a spinning crown. So when you notice that, and then it does absolutely nothing, it does feel, I don't know, a little devious. But on the positive side, both can be programmed to do different things based on different interactions, which is very handy for setting a shortcut to something like fitness capabilities, whatever you really want. There's a bunch of options, a total of up to four customized destinations. Flipping the watch over, you see underneath that area where the sensors are, it's still very comfortable up against the skin. It's not so deep and steep that it digs into the skin at all. That sensor pod really isn't uncomfortable at all. It also maintains perfect contact with the skin to do all the sensory things that they're meant for, fitnessy things, which I will talk about later. Now the strap, oh, the watch strap. This is the one that actually ships in the box and let me just tell you, it's not my favorite strap in the world. The strap holders too often actually slid out of place, leaving the strap kind of flopping in the wind. They just wouldn't stay in place to hold it secure. And in general, the strap just kind of looks a little cheap. And to be honest, especially in comparison to the build quality of the actual smartwatch. But thankfully, 
the watch can take a standard 22 millimeter quick release band, which is something I should probably get on pretty soon. Now, one thing that I absolutely require when it comes to an effective smartwatch is a solid haptic system. Over time, I kind of grew to accept that the haptics in the OnePlus Watch 2 are a little too light for my preference. In the activity of daily life, that haptic really needs to be obvious. And more than half the time in this case, I'd say I was left wondering if I actually felt something or wondering what I missed throughout the day because I didn't feel anything. Notifications kind of came through on my phone and it wasn't made very obvious to me on my wrist. It's definitely something that I hope they address the next go around. Now, one thing before we get to the battery, the always on display, and this is I think pretty important because the original OnePlus watch didn't have the always on display at launch. They ended up adding it later, but it was a big negative for the watch at launch. They got it right with this one right out of the gate. And yes, I absolutely love always on display. I usually activate it on any device that I'm using. It's my preferred mode of operation, but it also comes at the cost of eating more battery. And actually the OS warns you of this if you do turn on the AOD display, but I love the implementation of AOD on this watch. I found it incredibly useful, very easy to view in bright light. And some of the watch faces do some really cool things when they fade out into the AOD mode. So I give that a big thumbs up. But speaking of battery, this is really the marquee feature of this watch. Yes, it's large at 500 milliamp hours, but this is not just about a big battery. It's about how it achieves its performance under the hood and it all points to the dual chipset underneath. You've got two modes on the smartwatch. There's smart mode, which is the watch in full power mode, meaning it's operating Wear OS 4 to its fullest. Then you've got the power saver mode, which switches off the Qualcomm chip that runs Wear OS and runs the watch entirely on the best 2700 chip in that RTOS mode. OnePlus says this still enables most core functions when it's on that power saver mode. You only really miss out on a few things like the Wear OS 4 apps, of course, third-party watch faces, always on display, Google Assistant, and accessibility features. The rest of the watch's functions are still totally active, and honestly, that's pretty darn remarkable in my opinion. You also get battery distance through a key setting. If you go into the settings, you can find auto hibernation mode. This allows for the watch to enter low power mode when not in use or when you're tracking sleep at night. And I think this is a key feature for extending battery life, no question. It worked seamlessly for me. The fact that you can sleep track in low power mode is pretty awesome. And if you just take off your watch and put it on the nightstand and wake up in the morning, it didn't deplete at full steam ahead that entire night. It shifts down to that low power mode and you only lose a couple of percentage points. It's really nice. Now I ran two practical battery tests and in both cases, I use the smartwatch for all sorts of normal things, fitness tracking, phone calls, notification stream, etc. cetera. In the first test, I had all the default settings on. I also turned on the always on display. It's not on by default. I got a total of 103 hours with the always on display set to on. Now OnePlus touts the battery as capable of 100 hours. And keep in mind that OnePlus bases that time frame on smart mode. In my second test, I went fully default always on display set to off, I got 132 hours without the always on display, but with everything else running normally. Now I did not run a test in only power save mode because honestly, why when battery performance is this good, should I need to reduce the capabilities of the watch? I'm not the person to deactivate Wear OS to get extended battery life. Needless to say, however, you can if that person is you and you will be satisfied with the outcome. Now, one more thing regarding the battery, the charging puck that comes with the OnePlus Watch 2. Now, I feel like charging pucks for smartwatches are always less than ideal. They get a pretty bad rap. The cord kind of flops around when it's not used. You have to line up the pogo pins just right. But honestly, working within that paradigm, OnePlus made a solid puck. It's the right amount of magnetic pull and the cord that plugs into the puck is a standard USB-C and it's removable. Now that I can get behind, it's a great choice. And it charges pretty fast too, 7.5 watts, meaning around 45 minutes from empty to full. Hey, real quick, I wanna thank you for watching this review and let you know that I have so many more coming. I've got a lot of devices still to review, so please don't forget to subscribe to the channel right now so you don't miss any of it.
Okay, back to the review. Now, as for the software, fans of Wear OS will be right at home here, which is a big deal considering the last outing by OnePlus bypassed Wear OS altogether. All of Google's thoughtful design touches for the interface are here. You swipe up for notifications, swipe down for quick settings, swipe left and right for tiles and widgets. You can tap and hold to replace the watch face. Of course, you can access the Play Store if you want to install third-party apps. There's also third-party watch faces for extra creativity, expression, and function. And you might actually want the third-party watch faces because the ones included with the watch are not amazing. Now, another big reason people get smart watches these days is fitness tracking and sleep tracking. I've tracked many trips to the gym, Pilates, many sleeps. Now, fitness wise, you've got a lot of things that you can track here. Stress monitoring, heart rate, heart rate variability, blood oxygen tracking. It's all on board. Plus plenty of fitness types to choose from along with a quick launch screen. Although I wish you could customize the quick launch screen. You can customize the next screen, but not the one with the three buttons, which is kind of a miss. It does have an auto detect feature, which is really nice. So that can detect when you're walking, running, rowing, elliptical, cycling, and swimming. Didn't work for me every time, but it's possible that I just didn't notice because of the light haptics that I was talking about earlier. There is also a bit of a lag before it recognizes the fitness event. So you wanna keep that in mind. You might not capture every single step, at least, in the beginning. Now, sleep wise, the OnePlus Watch 2 tracks four states of sleep, awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM or REM sleep. Be sure to throw the watch in bedtime mode, which actually darkens the screen so it doesn't blast you out of bed when you roll around in your sleep. It's a pretty bright light if you're in a dark room. Really though, wearing a huge watch to bed, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but if you do, again, know that the battery mode ramps down, which means a small amount of depletion overnight, even though it's tracking your sleep at that time. OnePlus's O Health app that syncs with the watch is okay. It's relatively bare bones, to be honest. All the data that you're tracking, yeah, it's represented there and it looks pretty and everything, but there isn't a whole lot more. It's pretty basic, so keep that in mind. As for the performance of the device overall, very snappy, a responsive experience, never a lag or a drag. Those multi-function buttons allow for instant access to the things you like most and the chips deliver on the immediacy of those actions. Not only that, the smartwatch is operating a hybrid system with two chips doing very different different things. As a user, you would literally never know the difference, never know that there's any sort of handoff or dual operation happening. And I think that's a huge accomplishment. At $300, the OnePlus Watch 2 is approaching the upper tier of your standard smartwatch pricing in the Android world. Pixel Watch 2 starts at $349, but offers a more robust fitness platform, I'd say. And then you have the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6, which starts at $299, same price as the OnePlus Watch 2, but but it offers, I'd say, a bit more advanced sleep and fitness tracking capabilities. But the battery-minded might see this as the answer to their prayers, and they would be right. A smartwatch that can do pretty much all the things you want with battery that literally lasts for days. For the right person, $300 is totally worth the relief of battery anxiety with the OnePlus Watch 2. Battery fans with smaller wrists? It's bigger than my forearm. I hate to say it, we'll have to keep waiting. If you like OnePlus devices, you definitely don't want to miss my review of the OnePlus Open, a foldable that really shines against the competition. Click that video right there to check it out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.